Hi friends, before the video starts, I just want to let you know that we have merch on sale. New Christmas merch, we have this and that poster back there. Ooh, ah. A lot of stuff is on sale right now for Black Friday. So go check it out right here. Get it while you can. Thank you guys for supporting me. Now, let's start the video. He may or may not be having a hickey. Thanks for that. Boyfriend. <laughs> Hi friends, my name is Fluoride Toothpaste today. Today's a little bit of a different video. I don't really talk about the stuff I do in college, but if you don't know, I go to NYU, I'm a sophomore, I'm graduating a year early for some reason. Oh, Jesus. Gross. Don't ask why, I don't want to get into it. And I am an IDM, which stands for Integrated Digital Media. What does that mean? I still don't know. It's basically coding, photography, web development, and design at the same time. Welcome to college. <laughs> but one of my classes is for my minor, Digital Art and Design, and it's just a design class, so you do a lot of projects. And this week, I had to do a project about designing posters for an event. So, basic bitch like me chose to do a Conan Gray poster. I mean, not to brag, but I'm gonna brag a little. I like his music a lot. Y'all compare me to him all the time. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Oh, wrong way. Stop it. But I wanted to tell you guys about my process because I know a lot of you guys are going to college or you care about designing, so I'm gonna show you my work. Now I know that redesigning a famous artist things is controversial because there are the stan accounts that are like, he, he does, does everything, everything perfect, perfect. Oh, who are you to judge and why did you even bother changing it? It was the assignment. I had to redesign something. I'm not saying I did it better. I'm just saying I redesigned it in a way that I would have done it because it's what I would do. This is supposed to be my project, so this is no offense to his poster. This is no offense to his work. I think we all should be civil here and that this is just a design project. I'm gonna give you guys some background for the assignment, so let me just give you guys the description. Promote and inform the public about a culture event. It can be a talk, concert, music, exhibit opening, a podcast. I really debated doing our podcast. That's way too conceited though. It can be existing or made up. The final product has to be three posters, 2000 by 2835 pixels, three mobile graphics, either vertical or square for Instagram, and one has to be animated. Criteria, consider the information on the poster, you must use grids, consider scale, research your references and inspiration, show your grid lines, and five sketches. So I'm just gonna show you guys everything that I did. I did this all in Procreate. It's like a very affordable option for Photoshop. This is not sponsored. This is not sponsored. I wish it was sponsored. It's really convenient, but you could also do this on Photoshop too, probably faster. So first off, I had a brainstorm. These are my notes. I'm gonna move to this side so you can see them. The Conan Gray concert was postponed due to COVID. There's no future concert date at this moment, so no posters have been made which is why I wanted to do it. It's a world tour. It's promoting his latest album, Kid Crow. And usually from what I've seen, like I have one of his posters because I'm a I'm a maniac. It's usually photographs of himself and the dates on them. So it's nothing like too graphic designy, you know what I mean? It's more literal, like this is the artist, here's the date, this is what's going on. So it's easy to understand. We're used to seeing the posters of the artist itself on the photo. It's common to use the photo of the artist for the poster because you would want to see who it is. But I wanted to do a different route. I wanted to do no photographs at all because I thought like, this is what he usually does. Why not try something different where he doesn't need to use a photo? Because I think at this point, a lot of people know his name. On his Kid Crow World Tour poster, it's a little different because it's at least an edited photo and it's like a collage because it's put on a black background. It's not just a complete photo. It's a great photo, by the way. And he primarily uses uh, colors like red, black, and white. So very vibrant, very, edgy you could say i'd rather say striking because it's just it stands out and his text is very organic so it's not like i'm busy how dare you it's very graphic he used to have that vintage aesthetic you know i'm sure everyone knows keep on trucking that font stop using it because it's been overused too much it used to be cute until everyone used it to death on his fight or flight music video and on his maniac album there's like this organic type of text. It's not like a sans serif. It's not a traditional font. It's handwritten. It looks like it was painted by a brush that's like scraggy and not a good brush, but it gives it that rustic feel. A lot of his lyric videos have this type of font, so I wanted to work with that. So those are my references, and I just wanted to put some other posters that I liked in the past. I didn't end up taking inspiration from them, but I just like looking at them, so these are some ones that I used. And my brainstorming was, the songs are more edgy, more alternative, and indie than his previous albums, which were more soft-spoken, like Idle Town and uh, Sunset Season. Everyone says like he was a soft boy, now he's a e-boy, but like, he, he just changed his style. I don't like defining people like that. So predominantly the colors are red, black, white, yellow, orange. I want to use the word Conan Gray, World Tour, and Kid Crow because those are the things that stand out. And in his actual poster, it says Conan Gray in the Kid Crow World Tour. And some things I wanted to add was a grain effect, Polaroids, or crows. Literally, I just wrote 
crows. Locations are all of these. They're primarily in Europe, so he's not coming to New York anytime. And then I had to start sketching. So my first sketch, this is the worst one. I just wanted to do something vintage because I just like doing it. So I traced the original and I just put his name in like this bubbly font that's like filling up the whole screen. There's not a lot of negative space and it's just, it's just that like 70s and 60s feel. I hate it, I don't like it. It's too similar to the first one and it's also Trace, so I'm not gonna use it. I just got bored, so that's a scrap. Then I thought, like, I've seen a lot of posters in New York where they have this whole band that's just connected and it's right on the side of a, of a wall. It goes half a block sometimes. It's just really stretched out and it's a bunch of posters that connect with each other. So I was thinking, why not make the poster connect? So this is my real sketch. I basically wanted to do the words Conan Gray in the Kid Crow World Tour and just have locations because that's all you need. The date, sure, it's 2021. We don't even know actually. I'm assuming the locations are gonna be the same and I wanted to connect it. So I thought like having the white and black on the each background and having it change throughout the poster would make it like unique for each poster, but also cohesive at the same time, if that makes sense. And I, I resonated with it a lot. I think it's a little sloppy because it's kind of confusing like where the white's going. I didn't really do it too well. This was like a sketch one minute before class, okay? I did make sure there was an X in each poster. So like there's an X on the I, there's an X in the O, and then X in the O. X's and the O, oh, oh, don't get copyrighted. So I knew that was an idea I wanted to go with and I knew these were the colors I would use because these colors are always used in this music video. So you want to keep the branding consistent. My first opinion on this is that the lettering could be done better. It's a little sloppy. It's like too sloppy. It's not formal, but it's too sloppy, honestly. And it seemed too basic. Like, it's the same poster, just with different words. If you just zoom in on one, it doesn't really stand out. So I knew how to change it up. I do like World Tour the most. Something about this seems the strongest, which you want that to be the strongest. It's the point of the concert, it's the World Tour. So I wanted to make sure that last one was the best. Then I thought, well, what if I had this Polaroid effect, like where it's three snapshots that look like posters. Because if you look at his Wish You Were Sober lyric video, it like changes and transitions like this and it has a little filter going through it and it's like a collage of photos that go throughout the video. So I thought, why not do that? And that looked like shit, so I'm not doing that. I probably could have done something with it if I thought more, but I wanted to go with the first one instead. And I didn't want to show up without a mobile sketch. So this is my initial mobile sketch. This is before I looked at any of his music videos. I didn't want to look at it first. I wanted to see like what I could think of and what would match him well. Granted, I did watch the lyric videos like the day they came out. So I probably remember them. I started off with writing the name out like Conan Gray and then I wanted the second one to theoretically be in the, and then the last one to be Kid Crow World Tour. And it looks pretty good. Like I like the idea of the letter shaking and have it being like jittery. I then added white over each letter and like had it animate so that it looked like it was being written out or like appearing because I just think it added another level to the animation. Without it, it seemed kind of basic. And obviously I'm putting a time lapse of how I did it here, but like if you want to know how to animate in Procreate, it's like you have to realize that you'll be copy and pasting everything a lot. So I just duplicated all my layers first and then erased each letter. So I first wrote out the word Conan Gray and then I just duplicated that 50 times and then worked with each frame. Maybe not the most efficient way, but you wanna make sure you have your sizing right initially because it's not easy to resize and procreate. And if you mess up, you have to change everything, especially when you're animating. So I'm still learning how to do it, but I think this was a good start. That was week one. Uh, week two was finishing up the sketches. I wanted to change the mobile graphic because I wasn't, I wasn't proud of it. It was like kind of boring. And when I looked at it again, it was just filling up the screen. It didn't feel like it was moving anywhere. And then I looked at his fight or flight music video and I was like, this is how he animates. He does it like this. He makes it appear, pop out, and then jiggle a little bit. So I just said, work with that. This is the revised version. I also added the word in the, and my professor really liked the white text, like appearing and looking like it's being handwritten. So I went with that. So basically the word appearing is just four frames and I just made it jump out. You had to make it anticipate some principle of animation. I don't know. And I added noise to it because I thought like, you know, grain, aesthetic. <laughs> I don't know, noise. Everyone likes a little grain. And I made sure the grain wasn't on every frame because it, it looked too crazy with it on every frame. So it's every two to three to four. Pick a random number. The words in the are actually handwritten. So it's not like popping out because I thought having three things pop out is a little redundant. It's kind of annoying to look at too. So I wanted to make sure the in the was a little bit unique compared to the Conan Gray part. So I just hand wrote it four different times and had to repeat. So I wrote out the phrase first and then I rewrote it again, trying to trace it, but don't trace it exactly. So it looks handwritten and it's like jiggling a little bit. I'm really happy with it. I wish the lettering was a little different because if you look at my poster, it's in white. 
and this one is in red. I kind of wish I changed the color of the lettering and had it um, be white with the black drop shadow. I hope you guys know that would have been another hour of trying to fix everything, so I was just giving up, but I, that, I would do it if I had the time. I wanted each poster to have a motion graphic that worked with it. So this is the poster. It was originally just black text and I thought, mm, kind of boring. So originally this poster was just black. So this is talking about hierarchy. Now you want the words Cone and Grade to be first, like obviously. You want people to focus on the artist and then you want in the to be like an afterthought. It's below Conan Gray. But black is less emphasizing than white, so I wanted to change it because I was like, this is making me feel weird. I'm reading in the before Conan Gray now, and I don't like that. So that's why I chose white. I added grain always, always. Gave it a black drop shadow. Just nudge the text down like five different pixels just to give it an element of like, 3D is popping out of you. It's not just flat, it's not boring. Next up, we have the Kid Crow poster. Same theme, but this time I've chosen to change the posters in that each poster has a different background color so that they're all unique, but then together they still work. And I wanted to add the red X because I thought, you know, make it different. He wrote eyes with an X on his original poster and I thought that was cool. I didn't do that the first time. For some reason, I put it in an O of all things. And I just made a different color because I thought that if it was black, it wouldn't stand out as much. And I wanted people to focus on the X. I also debated putting a crow in there, but then that just looked disgusting. This poster is more simple and just focusing on text rather than looking at graphics. So no crow. Sorry guys. I also made sure that each poster had the three colors, red, white, and black, in different ways. So you'll see eventually that each poster has a different text color, a different background color, and a different drop shadow color, respectively, to make sure that they all are unique, but then they all also look the same. This is the animation I came up with. Once again, it's the popping out thing. And originally, I didn't do this X thing. I didn't have it like draw itself, but I added that in because it, would, it just felt too similar to the first one, and I still wanted each motion graphic to be a little unique, have a little bit of oomph to it, a little zhuzh. <laughs> they all have to be interesting to look at. You don't want one to be lesser than. I also made this endlessly looping because I thought it would work well rather than it just like skip and then go back to the beginning. That way you could just look at it forever, and I, I just stare at it a lot. Because <laughs> it's nice to look at animations that loop. And I didn't do my third poster because I didn't have time for that week. But that moves on to our final week. Let's go back to the first poster. This time I added some red X's, some slash marks to be like a crow <laughs> clawing at the poster. That's what I was going for. No one's gonna think that. But the X's are cool. I think it adds even that second layer of, oh, it's not just a simple poster. There's like some depth to it. Because if you look at the two, which one looks a little more interesting? I feel like the one with the X. Some people disagree, that's fair. Like, I'm not like 100% on, yes, this is better. I just think it's a little more interesting because I thought the original poster was plain. So this one also has the same X's, except if you connect them, the X's go across the poster because I wanted that idea of them all connecting together. So if you look at the last one, this is my favorite one. I think the colors work the best. The red text with the white drop shadow on a black background really makes it stand out. I got feedback that the locations are a little bit of an afterthought, which they were, 100% they were. I didn't add the dates to the locations because obviously there are no dates yet. This is like a theoretical poster. And my thought process was, well, these locations are very small. I feel like if I hand write it, you're not gonna be able to read it. But if you think about a poster being blown up to the size of a wall on New York City subways, You'll see it. So I should have hand wrote it to fit the theme. It's just way too formal compared to everything else. So that's a mistake on my part. I would fix that if I wanted to add this to my portfolio. So those are all my posters. Uh, the mobile graphics stay the same, except this one. Once again, I cared about the last one more than the other ones. And I feel like the last poster is the most strongest one. This last animation is the strongest still because there's a lot of things going on. You have the text itself shaking and being jittery. You have it appearing slowly through brush strokes. So I copy and pasted it a bunch of times and then each frame before the next one, I would erase a little bit and then erase a little bit more until eventually it all faded away so that when you play it back, it looks like it's coming out of thin air. There's also red X's in the background that are slowly being drawn. And the last part is handwritten and it's jittery because I wrote it each time and you know did four different frames and then copy and pasted those. So I really like this last one. It looks like it's in space almost because of the black and then the green. And I just think overall, if you put all of these right here, these are the posters, and we put all of these motion graphics together. I feel like it looks complete and they all work well with each other. I wish I animated the middle one, this one, a little better. I still think it's a little bit of an afterthought. Maybe add like a crow animation of it appearing, like maybe a bunch of crows appear and then cover it, the screen in black, and then it's like the inverse. Now it's 
white text on a black background and then white crows appear and it's back to the beginning and that's how you can have a loop. I just don't really know how to animate crows going onto a screen so I didn't feel like it. That's what it would do because I feel like having crows on a text that says kid crow makes sense. Hopefully you guys understand. Other than that, I'm glad I got all this done. I think it looks really good. I didn't play with the grid as much as I should have because that was part of the assignment, but I just didn't think that the grid would work for Conan's style. But you could make them more unique. I just didn't really focus on it. That's my fault. So if you guys want more videos about like what I do in design class, what I do at school, there's a lot of stuff I have done for my portfolio that I just haven't talked about. So if you want this to be a series, let me know. Other than that, that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you guys liked my redesign of Conan's posters. Don't kill me. If you don't like them, if you enjoyed, give it a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe for more videos every week. I post every Saturday. Subscribe to my second channel, gaming channel, podcast channel, all linked in the description. Also our merch is on sale for only a limited amount of time. So go check that out while you still can. All my socials are FrederickChenYT. And as always, I love you guys and everything is less than three. Kiana, you ready to podcast? Yeah. Yeah. Totally forgot to say this in the video, but fan art of the week this week is this person. Thank you so much for drawing me. I really appreciate it. Anyways, that's the end of the video. Bye.